What's going on guys, I'm Jody. This is Inspire Woodcraft. Today I'm gonna to show you a really easy, consistent way to set up for internally splined miters right here at the table saw. A couple of videos ago we talked about how a miter joint is not inherently strong with glue on its own and that usually we need some way of reinforcing that. Now in that video we did external splines. We cut a notch or a groove here, inserted a spline the same thickness as that notch once it's glued up, we can cut that back, sand it down, and now we have a nice flushed up external spline that is strengthening our miter joint. Now what if we wanted to strengthen this miter joint but we didn't want to see the spline? That is when we would have to do it internally and it would look something like this. This one is already glued up and I have a spline that fits perfectly in here, nice and flush, but I have a nice clean miter on the outside. So how we would do that is run our groove this direction, as a, instead of this direction like we did before, insert our spline, glued up of course, and then our other side. And now we will have a nice internally splined miter. Now the system that I finally came up with lets us do both three quarter inch, half inch, or any other size, because we're using the dimensions of the plywood to dictate where that saw curve lands. Now, one thing to talk about about these splines really quick is that for decorative and adding some strength to this miter, the grain direction doesn't really matter. We can go the length of the spline. But what happens if I put this in here, glue it all up, and then put a lot of pressure on there? If I was to put a lot of pressure on there, because the grain direction is running the same direction as the corner, I would be able to break that. Those wood fibers would break and tear and I'd be able to pull that apart. I would say if you wanted to get more strength out of this, you would need to make your spline run this direction. You want the length of it still this way. You don't want it sticking way out here, but you want the grain direction running this way. This is a lot harder to break than this. It's just kind of how wood works. Now the setup for this is super easy. I have my blade set at 45 degrees already. And since my blade tilts to the left of me, I have my miter gauge set up at 90 degrees on the right side. The height of it right now is set just enough to actually cut the material that I'm making my box out of. And I wanted to show you guys something real quick with this piece of plywood. You may be able to see a slight shadow under here. That's because I have a little bow in my piece of plywood here. The edges are straight, but I have a little bow to it. Now it's not gonna be a big deal because I'm gonna cut it into shorter pieces and that bow is basically gonna disappear. But when I cut this, I don't wanna cut it with the bow facing up. I wanna cut it with the bow facing down because if I cut it with the bow facing down, everything is basically eliminated because it's flat to the table and my angle is going to be what I want it to be. If I was to cut it this way, the amount that it's sticking up is actually changing my angle. And just that little bit of flex is enough to screw up my box when I go to put it together. So I wanna make sure that I'm doing with the belly or the bow facing down. Now I'm gonna set up to cut a couple pieces here. I have the square edge here, and this is a totally arbitrary uh, box. This is obviously just for video sake. I'm gonna clamp a stop block right here, just so I can get repeated cuts. I'm going to cut my first piece, then I'm going to turn that first piece around and get rid of that square edge, and then I'm gonna cut my next two pieces. The last piece that I need needs to be cut once, then flipped completely over and cut again, and I'll show you why. That is gonna be our setup piece. Now the reason we cut our setup block twice is because we wanna find the exact center of the thickness of our material, and if we cut it twice, we will get that. This is to keep consistency whether or not this is a piece of half inch or three quarter or 18 mil or even five mil. No matter how we do it, if we cut it that direction, we're always gonna end up with this point being the center of our piece. We're also going to set this up with consistently setting up to the inside or what I'm calling the inside of our blade. So this won't matter if we have a thin curve or a full curve blade on here, we're always setting up to the same reference spots the very middle of our piece, regardless of its thickness, and the very inside, or the closest to the motor on the arbor that this tooth is. Now to set up the height of my blade, I want to find a tooth where there is a flat grind on this side. 
Now this is a flat grind blade. That means that each one of these teeth are flat across the top. We don't have any angles one way or another. But what I do have on this particular blade is a small grind on this side of this tooth. That grind is opposite on this tooth and they just keep switching back and forth. So what I want is I wanna find a tooth where that grind is on the top here because I want an absolute flat spot right here to register against my setup block. I'm gonna find where that tooth is at its peak, which is right about here, and I'm gonna lower that blade until I get just so that that corner and this corner come in contact when it's at the top of its rotation. And right about there is where I'm gonna go. So if I was to spin this, it just barely touches it. That's where I want my height set at. So now I'm gonna lock that down. Now I'm gonna use my setup block to get my distance from the fence. I'm gonna slide this over, resting my setup block right there on the teeth of my blade. I wanna be able to come straight down from here and once again, hit that same corner of the blade. So what I do is I take another side of a box or a flat piece and I just come straight down and I don't want to be able to hit that tooth. So if I was too far over this way, I'd have a big gap in there. I'm not over far enough. If I was this far over, I would come down and I'm hitting that tooth. So that means I need to come over just a little bit until I'm nice and tight in there and I'm not hitting that tooth. Now I'm completely set up. All I have to do is lock my fence down. I'm ready to start cutting. All right, with my blade height determined and the distance from my fence determined, I'm ready to run these through. And now we're just gonna cut them right through here, just like this. And again, it wouldn't matter if I was using half inch, three quarter inch, this is gonna work the same no matter the thickness of our material. Now, if we were dealing with a really wide board like this, we could get away with just holding it against the fence and running it through. If you're dealing with something more narrow and this seems like you might get a little off, there's two things we can do. One, we can just use another block to push, similar to what we would do like on a router table. I can just use this to slide my way through. I'm pushing this against the fence. We could also just use a miter gauge with an auxiliary fence and that'll help us push the whole way through. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna make one groove, I'm gonna turn it around, I'm gonna run my other groove. And then I would just do that to all the pieces as I needed to. Now, I've already shown you guys how to cut spline material, so I will leave links to those videos. But as you can see, if we cut our internal spline material, we can put glue in here, put glue in here, glue this whole thing up together, and now we have a nice, strong, internally splined, hidden miter. And we end up with a nice, clean finish on the outside, but we strengthened it up on the inside. That's literally all there is to cutting these. And if we use a system like this, we're able to be consistent throughout all our projects because again, it doesn't matter the thickness of our material because we're always gonna know the center of it. It also doesn't matter if we're using a thin or a full curve blade because we're always registering off a known value of the blade that never changes. Now, I like this design because no matter the thickness that I'm using, I'm gonna end up with a consistent spline that is equal distance both from the inside corner to the spline as well as the outside corner of the spline to the outside of the box. And I think visually from the top or the bottom of the box, it's appealing. But if you wanted a wider spline, you could still set up with your setup block the exact same way, but then just raise your blade up just a little bit. You still would want it the same distance from your fence, but you could just go back and raise your blade up a little bit. That would just widen out that slot. So again, really easy setup. If you guys give this a try, come back to this video and leave me a comment or send me a message or an email or something and let me know how this worked for you. That's all I got for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching this video as always. We'll see you guys in the next one.